Wow, it just number had, five. Stop that a Chicago dead end. Strangler. See, that's what we're not gonna do. This is what we're not gonna do. I'm from Chicago. This is what we're not gonna do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna even get into this one. Chicago Strangler. What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Vince, and today we are back with another reaction to Debra Grimm Reaction to another video. This one is called Serial Killers That Are Still Active Today. They shouldn't be active, so we finna get into it. Let's see. Serial killer claims responsibility for five Long Island murders. A serial killer is behind bars. Police are Bro, that's on the, the scariest lookout for thing. possible serial killer. Did you serial know killer still that active? Any one time, there are between 20 and 25 active serial killers uh -uh. targeting innocent people across the USA, lurking in the darkest corners of the world. They stalk the streets, highways, suburban communities, and even urban centers looking for their next potential victim. Oh, heck These you know. sociopathic criminals devoid of feeling empathy who find joy in taking lives could be anywhere. The term serial killer brings the pictures of people like Ted Bundy, mm -hmm. John Wayne Gacy, and Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer, Dahmer. to mind. But there are numerous much more. Hey, that was nasty. Who, who's the worst at all of them though? Who y'all think? I think that's crazy to be eating people though, in my opinion. And terrifying killers out there who still haven't been caught or even identified. Many have left behind multiple victims, and there could be even more who haven't been discovered. Law enforcement agencies have been trying to find them, but so far, they've had no luck, and several serial killers have evaded justice. Here are the 10 most dangerous serial killers who are still active today. Oh my gosh. Number one. If they still active, and we know they still active, why aren't we doing anything? Find them, find them. Come on, I'm not trying to be looking over my shoulder every time I go into Walmart. The Long Island Serial Killer. Okay. The Long Island Serial Killer rose to fame when police investigators discovered human remains near Gilgo Beach on Long Island's South Shore. The bodies started showing up in 1996, and for the next decade, they kept finding more. However, it wasn't until the year 2010 uh -huh. that a discovery finally led them to conclude that all these victims could be the work of a single criminal. Oh my god. The Long Island Serial Killer. He's also been named the Gilgo Beach Killer and the Craigslist Ripper. The corpses of his victims <laughs> weren't found until 2010. In December of that year, Suffolk County Officer John Maloa and his specialized cadaver dog were searching for a local woman named Shannon Gilbert who went missing seven months earlier. Oh my gosh. But as the dog tried to pick up her scent, it led Malia to something much more horrifying. The dog had discovered the remains of four bodies, all within 500 feet of each other. An investigation was yeah if if they that close to each other it's the same person no question ain't no way coincidence possible that three people four people with different killers just happen to be buried at the same spot no way it's immediately launched and these are the these, these are pretty Gilgo girls four. by the end of 2011 they had actually discovered six more bodies near the same stretch of ocean parkway along wow. the beach even today Four of the total 16 victims remain unidentified. What? Police also believe there could be as many as six more victims linked to the Long Island serial killer. Despite rigorous investigation and countless leads, the case repeatedly ends up going cold. The Suffolk County Police sometimes release new evidence, hoping to identify more victims, but this incredibly smart criminal has managed to stay unidentified for more than two decades. The discovery years? made by Officer Malia and his dog during a remote search of the area began a lengthy invest he better not still be in long beach he better not still be in long beach i don't know i'm not, i don't even know where that is i'm not nowhere near it but it ain't no way he been just evading people killing them and just killing them for 20 years ain't no way getting away with almost it almost 20 years worth of deaths oh my gosh an unidentified suspect today it is believed that all of his victims were women except for one the first four bodies found belonged to megan waterman who was 22 years old mm. maureen brainerd barnes who was 25 years old mm. melissa bartholomew who was 24 I and thought she was the youngest. Lynn costello who was 27 at the time of her death investigators also found that the gilgo four had multiple things in common they had all been street workers who used craigslist to advertise their services online before uh. they disappeared each woman was found in an individual burlap sack according to the autopsy results they all died from strangulation. Strangled? The next four victims discovered in March 2011 were not wrapped That's in burlaps. That's some demonic Only stuff. one of these four bodies was identified. It belonged to 20-year-old Jessica Taylor. Late into the investigation, Shannon Gilbert's body was also discovered in Oak Beach. Oh my gosh. Police also released the full audio of Shannon's call to 911 in May 2022 in hopes of getting any answers in the case. 
They're also offering a $50,000 reward Dang. for any information that may identify the Long Island serial killer. But so far, he's managed to escape law enforcement and could be targeting more people. Number 2. The I-70 Killer Okay. The I-70 Killer is an unidentified American serial criminal. We got a picture of this man and we can't find him? We have a picture? This better not be him. This better be a victim. This better be a victim. Ain't no way we got a picture and we don't know where he at. Come on now. He's believed to have taken the lives of six store clerks in the Midwest during the spring of 1992. For what, He's though? He's been named the I-70 Killer because the stores in which his victims worked were located just a few miles off of Interstate 70. The victims of this serial killer were mostly young, petite-looking brunette women. Wow. Although one victim was a man, many believe that the criminal expected a woman in the store since it had a woman's name. All the stores he attacked were specialty stores, and he only robbed them of small amounts of cash. Investigators also so suspect he just that crazy. he was the he not behind the shooting of three more clerks in Texas between 1993 and 1994. One of these clerks survived. The I-70 killer is also allegedly the person who took the life of a store clerk in Terre Haute, Indiana, back in 2001. They're getting too close now. They're getting a little too close. Chicago and Indiana are right by each other. That's too close! His spree began in April 1992 with the death of 26-year-old Payless Shoe Source manager Robin Fuldauer in Indianapolis. She was working alone in the store when he attacked her. The body was discovered in a storage room in the back of the store around two hours later. He stole what? less than $100 from the register. The next two victims were 23-year-old Patricia Smith and 32-year-old Patricia Magners. The two were working at the Le Bride D'Elegance Bridal Shop in Wichita when he attacked them. <coughs> this was the only case related to the I-70 killer involving multiple victims. Investigators think that he was under the impression that there was just one woman in the store. The other three victims right, were Nancy no witnesses. Sarah Blessing, and Michael McCown. No one knows who committed these horrendous crimes, but there was one clerk at a nearby grocery store who saw the suspect climbing a hill towards I-70 when Sarah Blessing was attacked. All the victims were conclusively linked when a St. Charles detective suspected a connection. All the crimes were committed using a 22 caliber firearm, and the perpetrator had a distinct type. They were all shot in the back of the head, and oh all the gosh. stores were robbed. The crimes occurred at slow times of the day, when stores were mostly deserted, and several of them were in strip malls near I-70. Witness descriptions did help police produce two composite sketches and a physical description. Why is he He's living like this? He's described as being a white man in his 20s or 30s. He was tall and had lazy tall. eyelids and tall. If I'm not mistaken, this says five seven to five nine. That's not tall. That boy, that's a little boy. Slender. Tell him to come see me. Indiana? Bro, he getting too close, bro. Missouri and Kansas and all of them and possibly Texas. That's that's far. But Indiana too close. I was being a white man in his twenties or thirties. He was tall and had lazy eyelids and sandy blonde or reddish hair back in 1992. An age-processed version of the composite sketch was published in 2022 to show what he may look like today. Investigators think he's between 52 and 70 years old today, Dang. if he's still alive. And he's been killing Number since 20? Three, West Mesa Bone Collector. The West... Oh my gosh. This dude better not be collecting bones. It better not be collecting... $100,000?! Let me make some calls. Oh, boy, if I knew... Mesa Man. Bone Collector is considered responsible for the I'd deaths him up of so 11 fast. women whose remains were discovered buried in the desert on the West Mesa of Albuquerque, New Mexico back in 2009. Their bodies were reduced to nothing but bones. Forensic specialists used DNA testing to identify the women, one of whom was Silania Edwards, oh my the gosh. only African-American victim. She was just 15 years old at the time of her death. The bones were discovered by Christine Ross, who was headed out for a walk on a cool February evening. The last thing she was expecting was to stumble upon the remains of the victims of the most mysterious serial killer case in New Mexico's history. Why is he doing Ross this, though? Ross lived in Westside Albuquerque, a suburban area with open roads, cul-de-sac, and spacious yards. She and her dog, a Sharpe mix named Ruka, began walking towards an empty lot near her house. It had only recently been cleared to make way for new construction. She removed Ruka's leash, and the dog seemed excited to be able to run around in open space, but it had actually found something sinister. 
When Ross realized that her dog had brought her a bone, she took a photo and texted it to her sister who was a nurse. She confirmed that it was a human femur. Ross and Ruka rushed home and called Aww, the police. Heck you know. This kicked off a string of investigations that eventually unraveled the tale of the largest serial killer crime scene in American history. Ida Lopez, a detective working for the Albuquerque Police Department, had been searching for these women for years. She noticed that the missing what? women from Albuquerque were often young women from disadvantaged backgrounds. Why is he doing this? Well, like, I don't understand. Like, is he just crazy? What is he gaining? Nothing. He's not getting nothing from it. He's just killing people for no reason. Ida started calling these missing women her girls, adopting the responsibility of looking for 17 women <clears throat> who disappeared between 2001 and 2006. Wow. She was able to find their families and learn things about them. Many of these women had lived a difficult life, with most being involved in street work. People who knew them told Ida that they also had a history of substance abuse and connections to gangs. A man named Joseph Blee was suspected of being the West Mesa bone collector. Police and his friends and family suspected him due to his history of odd behavior mm -hmm. and repeated stalking incidents in the area. His DNA had been found on the remains of one of the victims. Oh. He admitted to the police that he knew her and had previously hired her. He is currently uh. serving a 90-year sentence for a string of assault convictions. Dang. The other suspect, Lorenzo Montoya, died in 2006 before any of the victims were found. He also had a history of lurking in the area and picking up a woman and then assaulting her. He was also reported for assaulting and threatening his girlfriend at the time. A professor from New Mexico named Dirk Gibson, who's known for his books about serial killers, said that he believes the West Mesa bone collector did not have personal motives, but was instead a commercial serial killer who disposed of the women in exchange for money. He also proposed- He was selling their bones? That boy was selling their bones? <sighs> Like, why, who would buy that? Like, what are you even going to do with that? Like, what do you make with bones? Human the bones. The perpetrator is someone familiar with the area, but is not a local. February 2022 marked the 13th anniversary of the West Mesa deaths, but unfortunately, the person behind these is still roaming free and hasn't been identified. Continuing investigations uncovered eight more missing women whose disappearances could be connected to the West Mesa case. Um, he's still All these killing. women were reported missing between 2005 and 2006, just a year after the first group of women disappeared. Number four. That's Belize nasty, Ripper. bro. The Belize Ripper is an unidentified Belizean serial criminal who is responsible for the abduction, assault, and deaths of five girls in Belize City between the years 1998 okay. and 2000. So far, no one has been convicted for these what? crimes, despite the extensive investigation that was aided by the FBI and Scotland Yard. All the cases remain unsolved. It all started in September 1998 when 13-year-old Sherilee Nicholas... Dude, these cases have been going on since before I was even born. Why are these boys still roaming the city, huh? Where's Sherlock when you need him, bro? Fifth grader at Wesley a, Upper like, School went missing. This is crazy how you just, towards the you school. could just get away with her it. Her whereabouts were not known until October, when her body was discovered in a pool near the George Price Highway. She was found wearing the clothes of another girl who had gone missing just two days before the body was found. The second girl was nine-year-old Jay Blades, whose remains were recovered nine six months old. later. In March 1999, another 12-year-old girl named Jackie Fern Malik vanished during recess while playing in the school playground. Her body was found two days later in a puddle along a dirt road, oh my close gosh. to where Nicholas was found. Other victims include Erica Wills, who was eight years old, and eight? Noemi Hernandez, who was 14. The deaths of these young girls caused panic in the tiny country. A national curfew was imposed, and guards were posted at school. During the months following the last death, several people reported a man driving a red car who was wearing a stocking mask. He unsuccessfully tried to attack and kidnap girls in Belize City. Unfortunately, he was never located. A oh pathologist, Dr. Mario Estradabron, revealed in 2001 that before dying, the victims were plied with alcohol and other illegal substances. Oh the Ripper used the same gosh. instruments in all five cases. Some experts believe he either has a medical background or access to surgical utilities. Authorities also speculated that more than one person could be involved in this. No new leads were reported after that, and the Belize deaths are considered the country's greatest cold case. Wow, I just Number had five, stop that Chicago a dead end. Strangler. See, that's what we're not gonna do. This is what we're not gonna do. I'm from Chicago. This is what we're not gonna do. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even get into this one.
Chicago Strangler? Let somebody come up and try to strangle me. Let somebody come up and try to strangle me. You're going to need a weapon. I promise you you're going to need a weapon. Because I'm not going. First of all, I'm not going to be walking outside at night. Chicago Strangler is an unconfirmed serial killer or a group that law enforcement believes is responsible oh, no. for the deaths of a number of women in Chicago. Oh, Between my gosh. 1999 and 2018, at least 50 women, Look most of whom were black. Yes, right, he's racist. Racist. And the killer not black. Watch. Were assaulted in a disturbingly similar manner. All these women died by strangulation in Chicago's south and west sides. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Y'all aren't from the south side. Oh my gosh. I live in the south side. Oh my gosh. Y'all know. Police deny that any one person is behind these deaths, but others point to the similarities between the cases, including location, method, and victimology. I thought this only happened the in the country. The serial killer has been targeting the women of Chicago for more than two decades. Dang! Between 1999 and 2019, a total of 75 women between the ages of 18 and 58 All black. died by strangulation in Chicago. By the end of 2019, police had only solved 24 of these cases. The remaining 51 seemed to have a lot in common. All these women were found dumped in abandoned buildings or alleyways in the south and west side neighborhoods. Oh my god! Almost 47% had a history of sex work, and three quarters of the victims were black. The earliest victim is believed to be Angela Ford, who vanished after leaving home to pick up her children's report cards back in 1999. Despite the violence and frequency of these cases, few of them have managed to elicit media attention. She was just trying to pick up a report card, bro. She just trying to check the grades. Her, I know her son's finna get a whooping, though. I know them grades wasn't good, but still. How, how did nobody see that? Well, she wasn't going at nighttime, there's no way. School is closed at nighttime. Nobody saw. Locals believe that a single perpetrator called the Chicago Strangler is behind these deaths. But for the police, the evidence simply isn't there. This is New York. That's not even Chicago. Reported collecting 21 pieces of DNA from half the crime scene. East Chicago. In each case, the DNA was different. However, the locals think the police aren't trying hard enough. To this date, one of the 51 deaths has been solved. The victim was Diamond Turner, who was assaulted by a man she had a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Thomas Hargrove, the creator of MAP, suggested that a man named Darren Dion Vaughn um, could be the perpetrator. He black. But so far, police have found no connection between him and the Chicago deaths. Number 6. The Sleepy Hollow Killer The Sleepy Hollow Killer is the name given to an unidentified South African serial killer. Oh Authorities my gosh. believe he is responsible for the assaults and deaths of at least 13 women most of whom worked the streets around Peter Meritzburg and the Midlands of KwaZulu-Natal. Bro, that's got to be the most dangerous job. Working in the streets, literally the most dangerous job. Like, you got to be real careful. Like, it's, it's tough. His signature was to strangle the victims using their underwear. This signature was also seen in the deaths of three other street workers in 2007, who were also considered the possible victims of this perpetrator. In the late 1990s, several women were assaulted using their undergarments in Peter Meritzburg. 13 the bodies 16 used to be discovered crazy. near the N3 highway. Authorities began investigating the deaths in 2001. They exhumed seven of the victims' bodies, hoping to identify them through facial reconstruction. But the investigation led nowhere and was closed. Between February and October 2006, three black women were discovered next to the N3 highway. The first one was found behind the ML Sultan High School. The second one near Liberty Midlands Mall, and the last one was found between Hilton and Peter Brown Drive. They were assaulted and strangled just like the 1990s victims, but this time the bodies found were severely burned after death. Oh. A task force headed by Senior Superintendent Gops Govender was later formed to investigate the horrific crimes and examine all the circumstances, modus operandi, and material evidence. In January 2008, a 32-year-old man suspected of being the Sleepy Hollow serial killer was arrested in Empofameni. He allegedly took the life of a 30-year-old woman near Howick. Her body was discovered by a passerby in the forest, but the authorities believe this case was not linked to the Sleepy Hollow serial killer. But it could be, right? So they could have some of these people, like that Chicago dude, they could have, they could have him because they got somebody for that, but they just can't connect it. So it's possible that could have been him and he might be at large even today if he's alive. Number 7. Jeff Davis 8 Killer I don't know him. The Jeff Davis 8, also known as Jennings know these people, 8, actually. is a series of unsolved crimes that occurred in Jefferson Davis Parish, Louisiana. The bodies of eight women were discovered between 2005 and 2009 
in various swamps and canals surrounding Jennings, Louisiana. The majority of the bodies were found in such a state of decomposition that the actual cause of death was hard to pinpoint. Mm. According to the author and investigative reporter Ethan Brown, police investigations were plagued by several missteps in the sheriff's office. These contributed to the inadequate evidence and loss of it too. Brown's work has revealed that law enforcement found multiple suspects in the Jeff Davis 8 case, so it's less unlikely to be a serial perpetrator's work. Oh, Fact, so they think it's more than one. That law enforcement's witness named members of the local authorities as suspects in this case. Ooh. The victims include Loretta Lewis, who was found floating in a river by a fisherman in May 2005, Ernestine Marie Daniels Patterson, Kristen Gary Lopez, Whitney Dubois Laconia Brown, Crystal Shea Benoit Zeno, and Brittany Gary. The last body that was discovered belonged to Nicole Guillory. Most bodies were in too advanced a state of decomposition for police to determine to, the cause of oh death. Oh god, that They sucks. suspected it was asphyxia. A task force consisting of 14 federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies was formed in December 2008 to solve these crimes. They were looking for a serial killer, but the family members of the victims suspected that the police were responsible for the deaths. Four people were arrested in connection with the... That's That would be crazy if it was the police. We just watched a video on how police be dirty and stuff sometimes, but... Bro, y'all supposed to protect and serve, and y'all out here just killing randoms for no reason? Case. Two of them were held on various charges for months, but were eventually released due to the evidence issues. Oh my All the gosh. victims belonged to South Jennings, the poor side of town, and knew each other. They were living in poverty and had criminal records. All eight victims also snitched for local law enforcement about Jennings' illegal substance trade. Number 8. The Manchester Pusher The Manchester Pusher is an alleged serial killer who people believe has shoved dozens of victims to watery deaths in Manchester. Since 2006, Where's there have Manchester been more than at? 80 accidental deaths down Manchester's canals, and no suspect has even been apprehended. For more wow. than a decade, there have been rumors of a serial killer who lurks down these canals but authorities have failed to find any evidence of such a criminal. The story gained traction in 2015 when the Daily Star Sunday published a two-page article on Manchester's killer canals. The article cited 61 deaths in the canalway that stretched for more than 10 miles. 61? Like, how? Like what's going on? Is, are they just walking and getting snatched up? Y'all, don't walk by yourselves. Don't walk by yourselves. Manchester. Since the year 2006, the number has drastically grown to 85. Dang. The exact figure for more recent years is still unknown. The paper speculated the mysterious pusher was a serial slayer and suggested that it's extremely unlikely that such an alarming number of dead bodies is a result of accidents or people jumping in the canals. Yes, that's not Several accident. alleged victims have been identified since then. In 2011, the body of trainee sports teacher Nathan Tomlinson was found in River Irwell, almost two months after he went missing. According to his mother, he had regularly texted her the day he died, mm. and his coat, wallet, phone, and passport were missing when his body was recovered. Oh a year after that, 21-year-old student David Plunkett was also found dead in the Manchester Ship Canal after attending a music event in Trafford Park. The police, however, still think there's no evidence to support the serial killer theory. Evidence may be scanty, but countless deaths remain unaccounted yeah, for they gotta find or have been something. dismissed as tragic accidents. One man claims to have escaped from one such canal attack. He anonymously told the news that a mystery man swung at him while he was cycling home along the Bridgewater Canal one evening in April Ooh, 2018. Oh, that's luck. He got lucky. I know whatever he swung at him with just missed. He on the bike too. Oh, that's some weird stuff. That is weird. You're weird. You're weird. Bro, what are you doing hiding in a bush middle of the night? What are you doing? At some point, you got to like self-reflect and be like, why am I here? He was luckily able the to mook. get out of the water alive. Several reports of alleged criminals pushing people into canals have also emerged in Yorkshire. Oh, they're Bristol, getting pushed into the canals. The Never authorities mind. may not agree, but people are quite convinced that a serial killer is lurking in the shadows and robbing the citizens of Manchester of their lives. Number nine, the eastbound strangler. The Eastbound well, Strangler strangling is people. another unidentified American serial killer. Unidentified? Who is this then? Whose well, mugshot is responsible that? responsible for the deaths of four women near Atlantic City, New Jersey in 2006. 
Law enforcement is offering a $25,000 reward for information regarding this criminal, but it has gone unclaimed. The four bodies of women identified as street workers were found in a drainage ditch in November 2006. Oh my gosh. It was filled with shallow water and was located behind the Golden Key Motel on the Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township. All the bodies were placed face down in a row. They were facing east and were 60 feet apart from each other. All four victims were clothed, but their socks and shoes had been removed. According he had a foot fetish. Ew. Ew. According to oh reports, my gosh. they had died due to strangulation. A 41-year-old repairman named Terry Olison was implicated by his girlfriend as the suspect behind these deaths. Dude, we need to catch he these people. He was being allowed to stay for free at the motel. In exchange, he did repairs. Investigators found cameras set up in Olison's room. They also oh. recovered inappropriate images of his girlfriend's teenage daughter from his things. But there have been no DNA matches to connect him with the crimes, so he was never named as a suspect. Elder Raymond Birchall, who gave himself the nickname Riverman, was also suspected as he had confessed to taking the life of numerous people. However, he could also not be connected to the four bodies found in the ditch. The victims were Barbara V. Brydor, Molly Jean Diltz, mm -hmm. Kim Raffo, and Tracy Ann Roberts. Over the years, the case has gone cold due to a lack of any new leads, and the um, perpetrator is probably still at large if he's alive. Now he could be in jail. Number 10, Rainbow Maniac. The Rainbow Maniac is reportedly considered responsible for the Patrias Park deaths. The victims were 13 gay men whose lives were taken between February men. 2007. Men. These are girls, right? These are girls. The victims were 13 gay men whose lives were taken These are between girls. February 2007 and August 2008. All the deaths occurred in Parque dos Paturas in Carapicuiba, Brazil and were perpetrated by an unidentified serial criminal who has been dubbed the Rainbow Maniac. Oh, the victims were gay men between 20 it, and 40. The name. All of them were shot using a firearm except for one. According to reports by Brazilian media, the park is an area frequented by street workers and the LGBTQ community. It's ridiculous, the first bro. victim Why you died in July people? 2007, and the last one died in March 2009. Officials from the Sao Paulo State Public Safety Department also announced that the suspect could be a state police officer. Since 2008, tests have been underway to see if the same weapon was used in each incident. Police had started surveilling Patrias Park when the bodies began showing up. They were hoping that the culprit might strike again and will get caught this time, but it didn't help. After investigating further, they found that someone from the department could be helping the culprit. In December oh, of that year, do that, police though? arrested a retired state police sergeant named Jairo Francisco Franco, oh. based on witness statements. A witness claimed to have seen Franco target a black gay man that night. Another witness also told police that he often visited the park in search of gay men and victims. Franco had to be released in August 2011 after the trial, when he was declared not guilty by the jury. Since wow, Franco's so he didn't even acquittal, get arrested. The case has gone cold, and law enforcement has no new leads regarding who the rainbow maniac is. Um, gosh, it feels a little better when someone at least I don't know. It's that's crazy because you don't you, they like the cases just go cold like you reach a, a dead end and it ain't nothing you can do about it. But I think a lot of these killers, I think karma got them. You know what I'm saying? That's so, so I think karma got them back. It ain't no way. It ain't no way you just killed that many people and just get away with it. Come on now, how do you sleep at night? But nah, man, y'all let me know if y'all enjoyed that video. It was a banger, man. It was a banger. So y'all let me know. If y'all know what to do. If y'all enjoyed the video too, make sure to comment button, like button, noti button, subscribe button, all the buttons. Because guess what? We gone.